Hello everyone, welcome to another MCR 3U1 video and in this video we are continuing chapter 3 um, and in this video we will be going over section 3.2 on determining maximum and minimum values of a quadratic function. Here is the review outline for this lesson. We want to uh, learn how to find the maximum and minimum values by completing the square and also by determining the zeros, and then we'll go over a summary of everything we've learned. Okay, so let's get right into the first example. First thing we want to do is use completing the square to put our quadratic into vertex form to then find our maximum and minimum values. So the question says complete the square to convert the following to vertex form, um, and the quadratic is y equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 11. First thing we want to do is common factor out a number, just a number without the variable, from these two terms of our um, quadratic uh, equation. So we can factor out a 3 from each term. So we'll do that and we'll get left with an x squared minus 4x in the brackets. And outside the brackets, we have a plus 11. After we've done this, we want to take this value um square it sorry uh we want to take this value um half it and then square it to find the um the perfect square to to get a perfect square trinomial inside the brackets so what we want to do is half four which will get us two and then if we square two we'll get four okay so if we want a perfect square trinomial we do x squared minus four x plus four. And now this can uh, be perfectly, uh, sorry, this can be factored um, into a binomial to the power of two, but we can't just add four to the equation because it will change the equations. Uh, so to keep the equation the same, we subtract the four, right? Because now if we do positive four minus four, we'll get zero and we'll go back to the step before this, right? So we haven't changed the equation and we have this plus 11 at the end, um, but we just added a four and subtracted a four. Now from here, what we want to do is multiply the outside term by the last term in our brackets, the negative term in our brackets really. So what we want to do is multiply this three by this negative four so we can take it out of the brackets because as we know, we can use the distributive property, I'll do it here on the side, to multiply everything um, outside the brackets to everything inside the brackets. So if we have 3 times x squared minus 4x minus 4, minus 4, x plus 4, minus 4 right? So if we use distributive property, we can multiply this 3 by everything inside the brackets. So minus 12x plus 12 minus 12. Right? But now, if we want to take out that 3 again, but just from these terms, so we can keep our trinomial, we can just common factor out a 3 from these terms. Minus 4x plus 4, and we'll still have this 12 outside. So all we've done here is we have simply just multiplied this 3 by this negative 4 to kind of take that negative 4 out of the brackets and leave just this trinomial inside the brackets. Okay, so we'll do that with our equation. So we have y equals 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 4, right? And if we multiply this 3 by the negative 4, we get a negative 12 outside the brackets, and we have still this plus 11. And if we simplify and we factor this trinomial, this will factor into an x minus 2 squared right because again we need two numbers that multiply to positive four and add to negative four so negative two minus two uh sorry negative two plus negative two is going to give us negative four negative two times negative two will give us positive four so that's that and then minus 12 plus 11 will give us a minus one so we have successfully put our quadratic into vertex form and now we can clearly see that our vertex is 2 and negative 1. So if we graph this, our parabola is going to have a vertex at 2 and 
negative 1, about right here. Uh, now we need to figure out which way our parabola opens up. And since our a value is positive, we know that it will, it'll open upwards. If our a value was negative, if there was a negative sign here, we'd go downwards. So our parabola is going to go up like this. And our graph, a rough sketch of our graph is going to go look something like this. The points are inaccurate, but it's just a sketch to let us know that the vertex, which will, uh, which is where our minimum or maximum value is, is actually a minimum value. So when completing the square, we want to put it into vertex form by completing the square. Now our minimum or maximum value will be the y coordinate of our vertex. So a negative one in this case, but we need to then figure out if the parabola open upwards or downwards. We have figured out the, the max or minimum by completing the square, but we need to figure out if it's exactly a maximum or a minimum. So from the graph, this looks like it is a minimum value. Therefore, y equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 11 has a max or min at um, of min uh, at negative 1, yeah. Okay, and that minimum value is negative 1 at x equals 2 at our vertex. Next, we have um, finding the maximum and minimum values by determining the zeros of the function. So it says determine the zeros of the following 3x times x minus 4 equals 2 times x plus 1 plus 3. So what we want to do is we want to put it into our ax squared or our, our, our standard form and then from there factor to get our zeros. So first thing we want to do is expand. So Use the distributive property to multiply 3x by everything in the brackets. We'll get 3x squared um, minus 12x. And then 2 times everything in the brackets, 2x plus 2 plus 3. Right? And if we bring everything to the left side, we get 3x squared. And then we have negative 12x minus 2x. Right? If we subtract negative 2 from each side, uh, we get negative 14x on this side. And this 2x cancels on this side. Um, and then 2 plus 3 is 5, and if we subtract 5 from each side, we'll get negative 5 on this side and 0 on this side. Okay, so this is our equation, <laughs> 3x squared minus 14x minus 5. So we, if we want to find our zeros, we want to factor this complex trinomial. So now we want a number, that uh, two numbers actually, that multiply 2 3 times negative 5, right, that multiply to these two numbers multiplied, and that add to negative 14. So what two numbers multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 14? Well, these numbers, let's say they're um, m and n, will be negative 15 and 1, because if you add negative 15, uh, and 1, you get negative 14, and if you multiply negative 15 and 1, you get negative 15. So we're going to split this middle term into negative 15x plus 1x, because this will actually not change um, the formula in one bit, because you'll see if we add x minus 15x minus 5, this won't change the formula at, at all, because if you collect like terms, and if you say 1, x minus 15x, that'll give you negative 14x. And again, you'll go back to your last step. So from here, we want to common factor out a, uh, sorry, we want to group factor. So we want to factor from these two terms and from these two terms. So we'll get 3x, x plus 1, right? If we factor out a, uh, sorry, not a 3x, <laughs> we can just factor out an x from here and we'll get a 3x plus 1. Right, we can factor out an x from these two, and we factor out a negative 5 from this side, we'll be left with a 3x plus 1 as well. Okay, now if you notice, we can common factor out a 3x plus 1, because each term now has a 3x plus 1. We can factor it out outside the brackets, and everything inside the brackets will be left, left is x minus 5. It's going to go 0. So now to find our zeros, 
um, we need to figure out what x values will make this equation equal to zero. So if x minus five equals to zero, if we add five on each side, these will cancel out and this will be five. So our x will be five. So this is one of our zeros. And if we want to make this um, factor f uh, zero, we'll make three x plus one equal to zero. If we subtract one from each side, we'll get three x equals negative one. And then if we divide each side by three, we get negative one over three. So our zeros will be negative one over three and five. So if we draw our graph at five and at negative one over three, we will have a, uh, the, the line of the parabola will pass through these two points. And since our A value is positive, this parabola is gonna open up. So the vertex will be somewhere down here. Okay, we'll be right here. <clears throat> so where do we go from here? From here, we want to actually find the vertex. How can we do that? Well, the vertex is right in the middle between the two zeros. It's the halfway point between the zero negative one over three and zero five. So what can we do? We can find the X value of our vertex by calculating this midpoint between our zeros. And how do we do that? Well, we can say, we can add them, five plus negative one, and then divide by two. This will give us the halfway point between them. So X will actually be, um, it will just be 14 over six, which will simplify to seven over three that's our x value and now if we want to find the y value of our function we simply just um we simply just substitute the seven over three into our equation our standard form which is f of x equals three x squared minus 14 x minus five so if we plug in the seven over three, we should get the Y value of our vertex. Okay, so we sub that in seven over three squared minus 14, seven over three minus five, which will get us um, three times 49 over nine minus 98 divided by 3 minus 5 or we'll make that 15 over 5 no not 15 over 5 oh i think i messed up up here so let me go back Messed up up here. This is not 14 uh, over 6. Oh, it was 14 over 6. Okay, my bad, guys. Uh, we'll go back through that. I'll pause it and I'll go back to the point where we were at. Okay, so we're at this point now. Let's keep going. 7 over 3 equals um, 3 times 49, but we just divide this so we will get 49 over 3 um, minus 98 over 3 minus 15 over three, which will get us 49 over three, minus 98 over three, minus 15 over three, which will get us negative 64 over three, which is our Y value of our vertex. So if we go back over here to our vertex, um, it'll have coordinates of seven over three and negative 64 over three. Therefore, our equation has a minimum value of negative 64 over three at X equals seven over three. Okay. 
And let's just go through a quick summary of what we just learned. Firstly, the max or min value of a quadratic function is the y coordinate of the vertex. So remember, if we put it into a vertex form, if we put our equation into vertex form, or if we find the zeros, we want to find that y value of the vertex. And then um, we go to step number two, where we want to look at the a value. So if the a value is greater than zero, so if it's positive and our vertex, is, our parabola is opening up like that, then, um, sorry, if our a value is over zero, then our parabola is opening upwards, right? Over here. Um, and that's this means that we were going to have a minimum value at our vertex because all, all the other points are above that point. Now, if a is less than zero, so it's negative, we're going to have a vertex up here somewhere and open downwards if a is less than zero because all the and we're going to have a maximum point because all the other points will be below that and lastly the vertex can be found from standard form um, of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c uh, it can be found algebraically in three ways completing the square converting to factored form and common factoring we use all these methods or uh, two of them uh, for example, in the second example, we use factoring form and common factoring. Um, the first example, we just use computing the square. Uh, we use these methods, we find our vertex, and we figure out if it, the parabola is opening upwards or downwards, and that's how we find our maximum values.